morning! I'm Grace Finkowski and I'm here with Alabama History Channel and I'm the reporter today. And my name is Kara Humphreys and I'm the official Ivy Green tour guide. This is Ivy Green, the birthplace of Helen Keller. It is located in Tuscumbia, Alabama. The hours of operation are 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. and tours are accepted until 3.45 p.m. on weekdays. The cost of uh, admission into the Ivy Green home is $6 for adults, $5 for seniors, and $3 for children. Um, there's also a production of The Miracle Worker in the summer. Uh, and contact the Helen Keller office to, <laughs> to get your tickets. Can't wait to see you there! This is Megan Jones reporting from Ivy Green with the Ivy Green History Channel. And the importance of Helen Keller's home is to visibly explore the life of a well-known historical figure that grew up in the Shoals area. This site is a hands-on resource that helps students discover what a day in the life of Helen Keller was like. Helen Keller's dining room. China and silver pieces are family owned and there's a sugar chest to the left. Usually only two shipments of sugar arrived in a year so sugar was kept under lock and key. There's a Jackson press right to the fireplace held silver, linens, and beverages. This is the parlor. There are photographs on the round table of Helen at age seven. Um, over the red sofa, Helen's great-great-grandparents, Alexander Spotswood, and his wife, Annie Butler Brain. He was an early colonial governor of Virginia. This is Helen Keller's parlor. Okay. This is Helen Keller upstairs of her house. So follow us. This is the boys' room. Okay. This is um, the trunk room. This is where all their clothes were kept. And these are all original Helen Keller outfits, which is crazy. And then this is Annie Sullivan and Helen's room. So Annie Sullivan's bed was to your left, and Helen's bed was to the right. And that's where a lot of their teaching and where Helen was learning sign language and all those things happened in this room right here. This would be a wonderful room to take your class to. There are many artifacts that have to do with Helen Keller and things that you could expand upon in your classroom. Right here is a blown up stamp of Ann Sullivan and Helen Keller. This um, mold of her was actually hanging in the Washington Cathedral where she and Ann Sullivan are both buried. Right here are many typewriters and news articles about Helen Keller and all of her successes in life. Over here are all of the books that she wrote and even the key that she locked in Sullivan in her room with. And right over here are letters that Helen actually wrote herself. And if you get close enough, you can see where the pencil went down into the paper. And um, that's her actual handwriting, so that's really cool. It would be really awesome to show your kids this, that um, even if they're struggling with writing and stuff, even Helen Keller could do it, and that's just really inspiring for them. This was where Helen Keller um, moved when she moved from her house here. Um, they took her out of this house and drove her around for a while and then brought her back to this house so that she would think that she was somewhere else so she wouldn't feel like she could go home. Um, and she stayed here with Ann Sullivan uh, for a long time, built to um, help her to really focus on her studies and um, spend one-on-one -on -one time with Ann Sullivan. And Ann was very adamant about her, um, we can't get in because of the bars, but Ann was very adamant about her and Helen having one-on-one um, -on -one time together so that their studies and her teaching could be efficient because when Helen was around her family she would lean on them and not um, live up to her full potential because they always gave her what she wanted so with this Anne was able to teach her and um, teach her well. This is where Helen kept her toys 
And this is where she learned a lot of words and meanings of words. And um, these are her dolls. This is a doll she created herself. Those are her shoes, blankets, clothes, um, everything that they worked with throughout this process. Helen Kelly was born on June 27, 1980 in Tuscumbia, Alabama. In 1882, she got really sick, which is what caused her to be deaf, blind, and mute. Through the help of her teacher, Ann Sullivan, Helen became a symbolic figure that paved the way for the future of deaf and blind students. Helen was the first deaf and blind student to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. <laughs> she soon was able to learn 30 words in one day after that. She learned several forms of communication. She learned that she could touch lips, reading braille, speech, typing, and sign language. So some curriculum connections that you could make with this asset and how it could enhance education would be touching on sign language, which helps us to talk about diversity and the importance of including people who are different, who speak differently into the classroom, which also leads, could lead us into talking about foreign languages and how sign language is a component of foreign languages. Um, we could also read the book and have our students um, compose their own play based on the story and act it out for the classroom, which would incorporate the drama art, I mean the drama standard of creative arts. Um, we could also have them draw or recreate a part of the home that stood out to them. So you have the water pump, Helen Keller's bedroom, um, the kitchen house, all those things. They could draw those when they get back from the field trip and kind of reflect on what they learned. Um, they also could watch the movie and give, see other actors acting out her story or watch clips of the play, which would encourage them to come see the play in the summer. There are many standards that could be addressed when using the Helen Keller Home as a resource. You can collaborate with students and use that to put on a play just like they do here during the summer. Um, right here you see a scene and children could, once they see this, interpret um, what they think would be a good scenery, create it, and also read The Miracle Worker which has the script of the play in it and they could reenact it by incorporating drama and that would be addressing the creative arts standards in your classroom. I'm here to give you a little tour of Helen Keller's backyard super cool so let's see what we're getting into so right here we have the historical landmark um very big deal here it's the water pump of helen keller um i don't know if we can get in it oh we can here is the water pump um this is where helen said her first word her first word was wawa meaning water and it was the first time that she ever exhibited that she knew what words meant and after that Pretty soon afterward, she could speak like 30 words and would learn like 30 words in a day. So her, as soon as she started to begin to understand what words meant, um, then she began to be fluent in other words. This right here is the kitchen um, where Helen Keller's cooks worked. Hope you can see that. And this is where they lived. And these rooms right here, they lived here, and those were the uh, workers who cooked for her. And it also was stated that um, there have been gardens built by, it says, the Shoals Master Gardeners. They design and build um, and maintain flowering beds on the grounds um, using examples from Helen's writing. So Helen used to write about um, the garden that she lived in and the flowers and um, all the things that she experienced as a child and the Shoals Master Gardeners um, kind of created a garden based on these writings. So a lot of these are most likely similar to what um, they would look like when she was alive. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of that. This is her little garden. All kinds of different flowers, trees, and benches. So beautiful. Thank you to Shoals Master Gardeners for all that they did to recreate this space for the tour guides or for the tour tourists. Tourists. 
standards that could be addressed when using ah, the tray. <laughs> there could be many standards that address. Um, you could do a play with your students, um, or you could bring them here. No, you couldn't because it's during the summer. Um, the first word that ever. Mm. Also, the people out here think that I'm crazy and I probably wasn't supposed to show you the water pump, so I could be getting in trouble. I think it's time we found a way back home. You lose so many things you love.